Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified channel. Today we're going to be doing a live mixing session of the song Leave the Whole World Blind by none other than Connor Cronin. Uh, sorry about the delay there in the stream, getting that all set up. A little bit of, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> That's, uh, feels like it's been forever, um, but we just had some stuff we had to get taken care of and so we're back up we're in the race again good to see each and every one of you so good good to see some newcomers into the stream as well as those in whom uh, are staples around here we appreciate each and every one of you and uh, if this is your first time here maybe you're wondering uh, what is this channel all about what's this guy doing well let me give you a brief synopsis of that this channel exists to simplify the complexities of a home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. The motto around here is that we can dream alone, we can even create alone, but together we can achieve so much more. And that's exactly what we do around here. And speaking of togetherness, these are some awesome individuals who got together and said, you know what, we like the content that Robert is putting out so much that we're going to become monthly supporters of the channel which therefore takes care of a lot of the bandwidth usage, a lot of the uh, plugins that we give away, the prizes that we give away, they're all paid for um, collectively by this amazing group of people. And um, apart from that, you know, when you find value in something, you know, why not? Especially when everything that I'm doing uh, for the most part, other than my paid courses and stuff like that, which I don't push nearly enough, uh, a lot of this stuff is just free training for anyone who wants to jump on board and you get a lot of value out of it. So thank you all so much for seeing value in what I'm doing and helping uh, by your monetary donations monthly. Thank you guys so much. You will never know just how much I appreciate it. Now, speaking of sort of the promotional side of things, um, I, I would be remiss if I did not give a huge shout out to my friend and mentor and also... Um, one of my good friends who brought me on board as a Pro Mix Academy mentor. I got to give a shout out to the Pro Mix Academy who is sponsoring this channel as well. Today's video is sponsored in part by the Pro Mix Academy. The Pro Mix Academy offers affordable courses from mentors, world class engineers, Grammy winners, and multi platinum selling producers. And with the resources available on the Pro Mix Academy, you can learn how to create radio ready mixes from the comfort of your own home studio. Most of the courses also offer multi-tracks that you can then add to your portfolio and begin to build out your business. Follow the link in the description of this video to head on over to the Pro Mix Academy today and start learning the skills that are needed to take your hobby or your business to the next level. Okay, so with that being said, um, it's been a while, but we're back in the, in the saddle again. And today we might be able to finish this mix all in one setting like we normally do, or we might have to break this down into various parts. The main thing is that I want to take the time that as I'm mixing, as you're looking over my shoulder, ask questions. Make sure that those uh, questions that you're asking are get answered. And one way that you can do that is by using the Super Chat feature, which makes sh like... <laughs> For sure that I see those questions come in because it like literally pins them at the top of my screen. Um, if I don't get to your question, you can always re-ask as well. There's um, a great song ahead of us. We just have to sort of tread lightly with it because it's got a lot of guitars and I want to make sure that while I'm doing this that I don't miss out on anything question-wise that you might have. So if at any time I'm going a little too fast or I need to slow down or anything like that, just let me know. With that being said, uh, we are mixing the August Song Contest winner's song, Leave the Whole World Blind. Um, and here's the thing, if you're not aware of the song contest, this happens every single month. At the beginning of the month, we all get together, we submit songs, and um, during that time of, you know, from the first of the month until the last week of the month, we will all then listen to those songs. I'll give you my professional feedback on them, let you know what you can do to improve them, whether it be mix wise, instrumentation, whatever that might be. And then the wonderful people here in the chat will also uh, give you some constructive criticism. Now this is a safe place. You're not going to get made fun of. You're not going to, regardless of your 
level of playability, regardless of your level of expertise, we want you to join in and to have some fun with us. So this um, song that we're looking at today is 27 tracks. Like I said, this was the winner of the August Song Contest. So after we listen to all of those together, and I will go through and then I'll pick a winner. And the winner gets a free mix and master from yours truly with three revisions included. So that's what we're doing today. We're mixing the winner song live for everyone to see. Now, if you check the box whenever you go to enter, which is super simple, you just go to the website, homestudiosimplified.com. At the very top of the screen, you'll see a link that says monthly song contest. If you enter there, you can actually tick a box that says, I don't want this to be mixed live and I won't do that. Also, you can tick a box that says you're going to allow the multi-tracks to be added to the VIP membership section, which will then be able to be utilized by everybody. Now, that doesn't mean that they can use these tracks. And, you know, obviously there's copyright stipulations. If you don't want them to change your vocals or if you don't want them to do this or that, um, you just make mention of that. Everyone within the community is very nice. Um, but because of this, we've built up a large amount of multi-tracks that you guys can actually get to use and utilize multi-tracks that are more like real world applications. These are not going to be like things that you get from, um, you know, world-class studios where you throw up the faders and it's done. It's already mixed. No, this is going to be stuff that you'll actually have to work at, which will build your chops. Uh, today I, I have before me, like I said, a song by Connor Cronin. And this is one of those where, um, I have a feeling I'm not really going to have to do too much to it. Um, but that's not why I picked it. I picked it because of the time and space and where we're at in the day, in the day and age in which we're living. It just really spoke to me. It really resonated. And I loved the vibe, the emotion that it was coming forth. So let's go ahead and we'll just give it a brief listen in the state that it's in now. And we'll start sort of right here where the vocals come in. So loud noise in three, two, and one. So as you can see, if I balanced out the volume faders, it probably wouldn't be that bad. I could probably get really close to a good mix from that. And if you've been around the channel very long, you know that I have a 15 step mixing process that I go through. If you want to get your hands on that mixing process, you can head over to the website and download that for free. There's also a ton of other cool downloads on the website for free. If you want to get involved, um, just, just go check it out. I guarantee you, you're going to get some value out of that and it's all free. So. Let's uh, start this out as we would any other mix. Let's go to the console view. And this is going to show us sort of a bird's eye view of exactly what we're dealing with. Now, everything that you see before you on the screen, all of these adjustments that's been made, this was all baked into my template. So I've not done any of this. I just loaded the tracks into my template and all of this has already been accomplished. Now, likewise, if you own Reaper, if you own Pro Tools, if you own uh, Man Alive, there's there's a ton of them out there. I do have a mix template more than likely for you. I've got one for Ableton, Cubase 12, uh, Fruit Loops, Fruity Loops, Studio Pro Tools, Reaper 6, and Studio One. So, and this will be pretty much identical to the template that you're seeing before you on your screen now. They should be color coded, they'll be ready to go. Um, as well as some cool little quick tips to help get you moving. Uh, if you'd like to get your hands on those, let me know by way of the chat and um, maybe we can have a giveaway for something. Okay, so this is my bus channels. I have my typical reverb, short, medium, long. My delay and saturation already set up. Um, what I'm going to do differently with this one, because I'm already seeing it's got a ton of guitars. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create a stereo bus for guitars. Maybe. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. And one of these is going to be for like, uh, let's just call it main. Main elect. Okay. Let's create another one for the rhythm.
It's going to be just a little bit different. Yeah, uh, DJ is right on that. You don't have to keep the color scheme the same way that I have. You can change it to whatever you use, uh, but it at least gets you, you know, your foot in the door and your best foot forward, all that other cool stuff. Okay, so I'm going to break this up into three different buses. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to call this lead. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to save on a ton of CPU by just simply uh, creating these. Hey, Jurgen, what's up, brother? It has been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, this is going to allow me to save on a ton of CPU by just simply allowing me to, um, and I'm just going to copy these over and I'll, I'll adjust them as I need to go. This is all about speed. Looks like I've already got some painting and, and stuff done on these. That was, that's weird. I didn't, I didn't know that I'd done any of that. All right. So I'm going to bring all the faders down to negative infinity and we will start with the drums we're going to just get these drums up to speed i'm going to bring them up to like negative six just to start with Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that all of these drums and the percussion is going out to the drums bus. As you can see, I've already got some things enabled there. Uh, reverb, short, medium, and long. And I've also got some parallel compression I think I've got the, yeah. I got those set to pre-fader, that's why you're hearing them. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that the parallel compression here is being smashed. Slowly build that back in. Okay. Be a good starting point anyway. Let's bring the bass guitar in. out that bass track not sure why it's in stereo it's definitely not a stereo file you can look at the waveform and find out that it's, it's not for some reason it was panned just a little bit that was weird okay so this one here says it's a di and this one here says it's the amp more than likely you'll have to flip the phase on these because usually when you have a di source and an amp source they're usually phase inverted. So let's go ahead and try that. There's the low end. Good deal. And we'll just check that real quick by zooming in here. Uh, according to this, it was fine.
Hmm. It sounds fine either way. Um, this is where an interesting usage of, uh, some Melda production would come in handy. We're going to use some auto align on this. And we're going to call this, we'll just call it a, okay. That's what I thought. Now what you'll notice is when I threw on M auto align, uh, even, even though they're both butted up against the end here, they're still not lining up time wise. Now they definitely did need inverted as we've seen, uh, but with M auto line enabled, it actually lined them up better to where they have more punch. That's when they're out of phase. It loses a whole lot of punch. What's up, Mob? A member now for 18 months. Thank you so much, man. Okay, let me see what the bass is contributing here. Very cool. Put them both together and you got something beautiful. Let's hear these with the drums. Alright, I'm going to group these two faders together, these two volume faders, and that way it will allow me to take this balance that I've just got, and by just adjusting one, it'll adjust the volume of both. So I can still keep the balance between the DI and the amp source, but I can still also adjust the, val the volume. I can already tell we're going to have a little bit of an issue with the kick. Not sure why the kick is in stereo either. Let's convert that to mono. So the question is, how does the signal get out of phase without swapping wires? A lot of times it's just um, like timing issues. So a DI source is going to be less latency than a microphone on an amp cab going through a 20 foot cord back to the mixer. So because there's that little bit of latency from one and the other a lot of times they don't line up properly like they should and so that out of alignment of phase is what causes that wonky sound um, but cool plugins like m auto align actually helps you to bring all that together and it does it in real time <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and go with that. As of right now, we're not doing any major EQ adjustments or nothing like that. We'll come back and hit those here in but a moment. All right, um, let's go with electric guitar left and right here. The 
Okay, so the guitar is very busy. The bass is very busy. It's going to be kind of hard to get a good balance there, but that's that's the beauty of doing these kinds of, of live streams is you get to see, okay, well, what would you do? In this case, the electric guitars, um, they're high pass, but only to 30 hertz. So I'm going to take this all the way up to like 120. Don't necessarily need all that low end from those guitars if the bass is inhabiting that region. So we're going to go ahead and shave that off. Let's do a little shavage. Much better. Cool. All right. Yet again, we're just we're mainly trying to get a static mix right now, Robert. We're not trying to mix it. <laughs> I gotta I gotta smack my hand. Bad Robert. Bad Robert. You're not mixing, you're just getting a static mix. Okay. Bring them up. Okay. Yes, mic distance as well. That's a that's a good point. Uh, that's why there's sort of the three three to one ratio rule, where. The capsule of one microphone should be exactly three feet from the other capsule in order for them to have good phase relationships. They do this on overheads a lot when you're recording drum overheads. You'll notice if someone is setting up microphones on drum overheads, a lot of times they'll have a tape measure out. and They're measuring from one capsule to the other about three feet. Closer. Okay, so I'm hearing something out of these bass guitars that I don't necessarily like during that section right there. I think it's right here. wasn't quite that far ahead. Um, I believe they call it the Glenn Johns method, Jay. Uh, you'd have to look it up online. Uh, but essentially, basically, Glenn Johns was a master of recording drums with two microphones only, and he came up with this three-to-one ratio. You'll have to check it out. Uh, I've dabbled around in it a little bit. I've not recorded a lot of live drums. I've, I've mainly done a lot of MIDI drums. But uh, for the most part, 
it makes the the phase relationships come out pretty spot on. I mean, you might have to just flip the phase uh, still, but either way, it it just works. I don't know how or why, but it it just does. So, okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Now, as you notice, there's a lot of these reverb sins were already baked in. They were part of my my template. So I'm going to go ahead and blend them back into taste because right now I feel like the reverb is just a bit too much on these guitars. They're kind of getting they're getting muddied up here. So I'll blend those back into taste. <laughs> well, thank you so much, jo Joshy. Uh, Joshy boy, appreciate it. Yeah, the phase relationships actually, believe it or not, you got to check them on MIDI drums as well because they emulate them after real drum sets. So there was years during and baked into my template, I was using, I shouldn't say years, it was more like months, baked into my template when I first got addictive drums. I thought, oh, these are going to be perfect right out of the box. And that was not the case. The overheads the phase was flipped on the overheads and they were out of phase. And I was like, what? And I was like, what? Okay. So I'm moving the painting knobs as well. Those were wrong. Um, all right. So now this is the, the dry signal. So they didn't need quite that much reverb. As you can hear, it actually cleaned up the guitars a lot, made them sound more, um, made them sound more realistic, honestly. And for this genre of music, you don't really need the guitar smothered in reverb. A little bit of spring reverb should do the trick. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select all tracks because I'm pretty sure when I open up these, yeah, I got nothing but reverb units except for on these down here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, remove that, remove that. Okay, so now I've got nothing but reverb units. What I would like to do is I would like to use some analog emulation across the board, uh, but I want to make sure that I'm using something that will will do the trick. Usually this is where uh, my good friend Mob the Gamer is like, hey, you need to try this. So Mob, any suggestions on a good um, console emulation within Waves? I'm wanting to use, I'm trying to venture more into the Waves area. Haven't used it ever, <laughs> or at least in a long time. Uh, and he's got a really good grip on what sounds good. I'm, I'm thinking the API. Hmm. NLS. That's what you were talking about. Okay. Let's check that out. NLS. Okay. Channel mono. We'll put these on the mono channels and we'll save the others. Ah, there it is. Okay. So this is kind of like the same thing that Cakewalk has. Just a little bit different. Is this resizable? Yeah, good. Ooh, ooh. Okay, this, this is different than what Cakewalk has. Okay, and this is the, okay, these are the VCA groups. That's where I was getting messed up earlier. If I just leave them like this, though, it should, should do what it's supposed to. So as you can see, we're slowly starting to add on some plugins now. But this is just basically um, sort of a preliminary. I always like to, to put on some form of um, saturation just to give it that extra edge that it needs. Yeah, thank you, DJ, for putting that in the chat. 
Josh Boy says, I've been looking into home studio stuff as well as old multi-tracks, but right now I don't live in a house that's big enough to have a studio apart from a computer and a sound card. Well, you're in luck, Joshy Boy, because that's pretty much what everybody in the chat and that's pretty much what everybody's doing these days. You don't really have to have a dedicated space for a studio, especially if you're not if you're not the band, if you're not recording live drums, if you're not recording, you know, upright pianos and, and crazy stuff like that, you really, you'll be fine with a, a spare bedroom of the house. That's exactly where I'm in right now. So uh, don't limit yourself based off of what you don't have. Um, if that makes any sense, just go with what you have and start learning the ropes now. And then that should help you to later on to you know, get up to speed. There were some of these files here that were stereo. Okay, so this electric lead, that was definitely stereo. These toms, they actually do look stereo as well. Okay, the snare, it does not look stereo. Um, Holding that down to mono. Okay. That does look like a stereo track. Uh, that does as well. The hi hat. That one's kind of tricky, but I think it is recorded in stereo. Okay. Now, in case you guys are wondering, well, how does he know which is stereo and which is not? If you see two lines on the track itself here, that means that it's, it's in stereo, but that doesn't always mean that it is stereo, okay? It might be printed that way, but that doesn't always mean that it is. Now, when you see two lines and you see one side of it is weighted heavier than the other, like for instance, this is weighted a little bit heavier. Let's see if I can zoom this in. And what I mean by weighted heavier, like this is a a bigger waveform than this is. That means it's weighted heavier on the right side. So that's definitely a stereo track. That means it's been recorded in stereo. Okay. The microphone is still working. I had that muted while I was talking to my wife here real quick. Toms, those were in stereo. I think the rest of these are in stereo. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the NLS stereo on those. And what we'll do is like a before and after. So you can see exactly if it's making any difference or not. A lot of times what I've noticed with these plugins is you really don't have to tweak them to that, that much. You just put them on, on the channel or on the bus and you hear it. It's, it's crazy, uh, but it definitely does work. This is also one of those things where I've had people say, because I'm, I, I use buses a lot, and I always give the argument that if you use a bus, you don't have to have 50 instances of a plugin. You can just use it on the bus and then you don't have to have all of them residing there. Now that said, um, when it comes to, there we go. When it comes to console emulation, it actually does better to have one instance on each bus because a lot of the console emulators act like real consoles. Now, real consoles would have what's called crosstalk between the channels. And so they would all act just a little bit differently from another. There would be a little bit more harmonic saturation on one versus on another. And so, yeah. It's usually good to have multiples on there for that reason. And you'll notice too that whenever I opened up the Waves NLS feature here, uh, 
but uh, where's that? You have your bus options and then you have your channel options. So you want to make sure that your bus is set to the bus, obviously. And if there's any pre-existing plugins on here, such as the parallel compression channel, I'm going to go ahead and put this after the fact. So that that's running through the console after the fact, if that makes any sense. And I will go ahead and extend this all the way even into the reverb sends, the delay and the saturation. Okay. Now, let's uh, play a portion of this and see if we hear a little bit of a difference. It's not dramatic, but it, I definitely do hear a difference. Now, if I was to take off the effects, here's what you would have. Now, don't be fooled by the loudness. Uh, that loudness will get you sometimes. You'll think, oh, it was louder, it was better. That's not the case. Uh, ba -dum -bum -ba -da -dum. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this up to six. I wish there was a way to boost all of them up to six at once, but because it's not in the pro channel, we can't do that. Open the presets, he says. Okay. You'll find different numbers indicating the different consoles they've captured for the emulation, so you can put it on every channel and set a different number to each one. Hmm. Yes, it also does remove the EQ, so... Um, interesting. Okay. Spike is SSL. You know, on something like this, I might actually want to go with a Neve. I think I'm going to go with Neve. And that just changed. Oops. Nice. Okay. Well, I'm glad you found the channel, brother. All right, so this is the boring part that nobody really wants to... Oops. I keep moving tracks instead of... I guess I could just do this. You know, it would have been a lot easier to just uh, set the first one and then click and drag. <laughs> oh, boy. These are things you learn as you go. So if I set this to six, then that should... That didn't work like I thought it would. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So I would set one to one, and then I would set one to six, and then I would set one to... So it's not going to change the gain setting. It's just changing what channel it's on. Gotcha. So then it will interact a little differently. Okay. Thanks for uh, helping to clarify that, Jurgen, because I was kind of... Yeah, Mob is a, Mob, honestly, he should be a Waves affiliate, as much as he knows about these plugins. You need to reach out to him, Mob. You need to say, hey, look, I've got this 
mixing vocals course on the home studio simplified channel who is a waves affiliate so why don't you uh, make me a waves affiliate so this is a stereo track so i'm actually gonna set this over here to the stereo oops i don't want bus stereo though So this is this will be a good uh, opportunity to show you what I meant by. So I'll set it to channel stereo. Set it to six. Now this would be the easier way. Just simply hold control, click and drag it. Now that next one is a mirror image of that one. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. Just make it a lot faster. We're all about the need for speed. Now I'm setting the gain at six. Typically speaking on a lot of these console emulations, six is like the magical number. It's just where you sort of get the, the grit that you're looking for, but not like the wolfiness, if that even is a word. It is now, I just made it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these. Okay. Appreciate you all bearing with me here. This is uh this is part of it though. This is the part why this is actually this is the reason why engineers have assistants. <laughs> they do all this and then the engineer just comes in, sets down and goes, "All right, what do I got to do now?" So, along those lines, I'm now going to introduce my lovely assistant. Me. <laughs> uh, although I do, I have to say I have some awesome assistants here in the chat. Um, I wouldn't be half as organized as I am if it wasn't for some of these awesome individuals. I'm going to go ahead and set all these buses here to a Neve as well. I feel like for this kind of a song where it's like a punk rock, uh, heavy guitar driven, it is deserving of the, the Neve. And now I can make the one setting and then just click and drag them all. And it will make an exact identical copy, a clone, if you will, of the one above it. Okay, now let's listen to the same portion of music with all of this um, Nevi goodness here. All this Nevi Nicks for all of you uh, Fleetwood Mac lovers. Yeah, I definitely hear that. Okay. With that being said, that's going to be the first course of action that we take. So we've really touched nothing, uh, mainly just balance out some faders, and um, we've got... Yeah, just like a fader balance. So when are these other guitars coming in? I want to make sure I... Right here. Okay, so this is a good, 
this right here would be a great place uh, to try out the new plugin. And um, actually, it'd be a great way too to see just how CPU intensive it is. So I'm going to actually join a group. And it lets me have up to eight different, oops, didn't mean to put that in there. Up to eight different um, instances within the group. Here I go doing things the hard way again. Okay, that should be good. Now we'll come up here and we have an electric left. Um, let's let's dissolve the group. Hold on. And the reason we're doing that is just I want to make sure that I get all of them in there in the right order. So guitars, electric left, electric right, left, right. Right, left, right, left, okay, so it's only let me add, oh, the group is full at five tracks, okay, I thought I could have up to eight, okay. Well, let's remove these. Okay, let's dissolve that group again. Join a group. Literally just got to play with this uh, last night, so it's very cool that I get a chance to use this. All right, so that's all of them together. And we're going to play it and allow this to learn it. So where does those other guitars come in at? Oh wow, they're like way up here. So actually I could probably just remove them from the... I could do those individually, they'd be fine. Alright, let's go back to these guitars then. As you can see, here's the group. That really cleaned those guitars up um, beautifully. And I still just went ahead and left my EQ moves in there because it really didn't affect anything I don't feel like. So, um, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. now when it comes to When it comes to stuff like this, a lot of people would say, Robert, 
you're cheating. And I would say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> back there and find those again and set my dynamics to be very dynamic if you haven't checked out my review on this already Okay, that's amazing. Anyway, if you haven't checked out my review on this uh, Smart EQ3, I just posted that video um, yesterday, I believe. And uh, I got to say, guys, this is one of those game-changing EQs. It's not like the Gullfoss. It's not like Soothe. It's it's a beast all of its own. It's $129 right now. I know that's very expensive for a lot of people. Um, but I got to tell you, it's, in my opinion, it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, if nothing else, just for the speed's sake. I love the fact that I can get somewhere really quickly and then tweak it from there and usually have something just right out of the gate that's like, wow, okay, that's good. That's real good. Um, so with that being said, uh, that was weird. Just that I signed out of. It says that I have signed out of YouTube. That's That's weird. Hopefully the stream is still going, but okay. Anywho, um, it looks like it is. You guys are still talking to me, so I guess I am. Um, but yes, uh, you can automate it as well. So that's always a, another cool aspect of this. A lot of other, you know, uh, where's that? Yes, yes. Okay, there it is. I was trying to get that up on the screen. Uh, yeah, you can automate it. That's the beauty of it. You can automate these bands. You can automate the dynamics. You can automate... Actually, I'll just show you real quick. So, let's go to one of these tracks that this is on. And I'll go to an automation lane. I'll select the Smart EQ3 choose parameter so as you can see there is nothing on here <laughs> that you can't automate very cool so with that being said uh, we just got somewhere really quickly with this plugin and um, I was trying to let's see if I can do, 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 do. I'm almost positive, don't quote me on this, but I'm almost positive. Yes. So if you get it on Sweetwater right now, you can actually pay $43 a month or it's $129. Now, if you plan on going through Sweetwater, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my link uh, as an affiliate, that would just bring a little bit of the, uh, at no extra cost to you, I would receive a little bit of a commission for leading you to this product. So if you're interested in that, you want to get your hands on the plugin, um, here's the link. In fact, if you want to buy anything from Sweetwater, please use this link. It just, uh, like I said, no extra cost to you. It just helps them to uh, realize that I'm I'm sending them some traffic so appreciate that guys all right so it seems like we've not really done a whole lot um, 
but they're already already coming into uh, a lot better place than they were. Um, so let's uh, open this. Oops, on the bus panel, close all that down. I want to see what my headroom looks like right now. Bass is just a little bit loud. Yeah, we're pushing a little bit on the, pushing a little red on the faders. So we're going to go ahead and um, select all the tracks and just bring them down by about 3 dBs. Look at that, there we go. All right, so Mob is suggesting to try Shep 73 on the electric guitars. It's a nice musical EQ and it has a cool drive knob. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and send all these guitars to, let's see, not all of them. <laughs> what would using sweet water hurt? Uh, well, you will get candy. Uh, let's. Okay, let's send the rhythm guitars to the rhythm. Uh, I know I created that. Where's it at? Yeah, rhythm electric. And let's put it on there. All right, so yet again, microphone's still working. <laughs> I was having a conversation with my wife there. Uh, coming back to the console emulation, did you ever compare Pro Channel console modules to the other channel strip plugins? Da -da 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 -da. You know, I really didn't. I need to. I think they all essentially do pretty much the same thing, but um, Jay says, you're muted. No, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I was, but I'm not. Um, that would be a really good uh, and a clever even uh, shootout, though. So on these rhythm electric guitars, I'm going to put on this Shep 73. That's what um, Mob was suggesting that I do. And I do see um, midside as well as EQ phase phase. Okay. Preamp drive. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Good deal. Let's see what this does to the electric guitars, just right out of the gate. What we got here? What we got? Okay, that's a little bit too much of a scooped mid for me. I'm going to bring that back in.
man, you wasn't kidding. That is crunchy. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. I did did not know it was going to get that loud. <laughs> um, I do I do definitely like that mob. Um, that almost seems like though that that might be something that would be better as a blend in. So I'm going to send that over here, and I'm going to call this drive bus. And this is going to be for my guitars. And then I can just send a little bit of that to that drive. And uh, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> That means that I will actually be able to crank that up more. And then I can just send it to the drive bus. Much better. Okay. Yeah, this track is, uh, needless to say, it's very loud. In fact, I'm going to turn these guitars down a little bit in reference to the drums and bass. I'm not worried about that clipping so much on the master bus right now. Uh, I can always adjust that moving forward. Um, there's a section of this song though where there is. Uh, did I, did, where's it at? Right here. I want to adjust the volume levels of these. Okay, so I definitely want to put some I want to put some reverb on that. I'm going to use some medium plate. I think that should push it back into the mix just enough and make it hopefully have like a little bit of a realism. I mean, it's obviously it's real, but there has been a second night of in France after two teenagers were killed in an accident involving a police car on Sunday. See you later, Jurgen. Prime Minister promised that justice would prevail. Why we don't have the truth? Just that. Say the truth. Say that they are citizens of this country. And Why do you think people this just go back home? disconnection has occurred? Why do people feel not part of France? Many of these people are from Arab or North African origin. Because uh, since who are 30 years, Why do they feel nobody thinks so to create alienated. link between the ghetto, that where people live, and the center. You would describe and this as a ghetto? Of course, we describe this since a long time. Women are in the ghetto trying to create link, trying to say to the people, don't use violence, use the right to fight against discrimination. Okay, so what I did there was I just automated the pan 
so that during these portions where they're both talking, sort of different newscasters are talking at the same time, I got one on the left and one on the right, but when it comes down to where it's just this one stereo file, I've panned it back up the middle, so it just uh, kind of makes it to where it doesn't, doesn't sound quite so disconnected. And then the reverb. There has been a second night of rioting in France after two teenagers were killed in an accident. As you can see, on its own, standing alone, it doesn't sound the greatest, but when you put it in the context with the mix, it just helps to push it back into the mix, helps it become part of the mix. There has been a second night of rioting in France after two teenagers were killed in an accident involving the police fire on Sunday. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's throw on um, let's throw on an API here. These are really good for vocals. And it's not like I'm trying to get like a vocal sound. I'm just basically trying to get something that pokes through a little bit better. And I'm just going to use a lead Vox preset. There has been a second night of life. Now let's go ahead and we might actually get closer to having a finished mix than I thought. And it's only been an hour, so good deal. Let's work on these lead vocals now because this is, uh, I always usually save these for last, but once I get them sort of hammered into the mix, then everything else I can start building around it a little bit better. Okay, they're definitely a lot quieter than the rest of the mix, obviously. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn everything down again a little bit here. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring on some waves. I mean, I could use an O box, but I don't want to go that crazy into it. Clarity. Hmm. Let's try to break out something that I haven't used. And yes, you're right. I'm like a kid in a candy store right here. <laughs> um, but what's the screamer? It's obviously an overdrive. Okay. Maybe don't want to go that far into things. Um, Enigma. I remember what that does, I think. Hmm. Ooh, I haven't used vitamin yet. And I've heard this is really good for vocals. Let's just pull up a preset. And we'll go with, uh, let's just use lead vocal one, see what that does.
Okay. Um, not without being able to hear that like I should, it was kind of hard to obviously to hear it. So let's, uh, let's put a CA two a on that bad boy. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in as Paris burns a talk of change. Okay, definitely hear some sibilance there. Let's break out the old waves. DSer. Super simple. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling. Okay, that definitely cleaned up the the S's a lot. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. It sounds actually pretty transparent too. So, um, I'm gonna go with with Mob here on this Arvox. I do remember using that. A lot of the R. Uh, isn't that, don't they have R base and R, I thought there was like an R base. Anyway, oh, I think in a Renaissance, Renaissance base is amazing. I don't know if it's, is it just me or does that sound like it's pumping? We can feel it in the air. We're talk of changes spreading on the wind. We're feeling mm, it. I think it's the way he was singing into the mic. Talk of changes spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now. The effect effects of turning a blind eye to the crowd i can definitely hear what that's doing to we the need vocals. a read to find a borders tear our fences down okay or we could build a wall keep them apart out of sight and out of mind 20 stories tall nothing will harm those safe on the other side we could Okay, so that doesn't sound too bad. Even the, the reverb itself actually sounds pretty stinking good. So um, I'm going to duplicate this track. And I'm going to take everything off but the de and the Arvox. And uh, I think we'll actually even take off the reverb sends. And we're going to insert some. Now this is where I do want the saturation. So where was that thing I just seen a minute ago? It was like the mangler or something. Ambisonics. Where was that at? I was near o Ovox, I thought, when I seen it. Torque. That sounds cool. <laughs> uh, hmm. I, I yeah, I could always use a guitar. A meta filter, meta flanger. What was that called? Oh, it was called Screamer or something. Well, I thought it was. Hmm. This is the problem when you have too many options. <laughs> there it is. Let's see what this does. This looks, this sounds like it could be cool. What? Whoa. Whoa. 
Whoa. We can feel it in the air. Nice. Okay, that's exactly what I was looking for. Some kind of something there. We can feel it in the air. All right, and now we're going to insert. Let's use Waves Harmony on this one. Instead of using the old uh, trusty little Ultra Boy, which does an amazing job, by the way. Let's use Harmony. I think it's actually called Waves Harmony, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. So this should give us the same effect. It'll just be a little bit different. So different's good, you know? You got to break out of the box sometimes, you know? We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now, the effects of turning our blind eye to the crowd. We need to redefine the borders, tear our fences down. Interesting. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. Hmm, that's pretty cool. I like that. Screamer above your... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now, the effects of turning our blind eye to the crowd. We need to redefine the borders, tear our fences down. Okay, I'm going to set these to negative five. Actually, I want them to be a little bit closer than that. Oh, we could build a wall, keep them apart, out of sight and out of mind. Twenty stories tall, nothing will harm those safe on the other side. We could assemble an army, ignorance is pissed, I'll march up and lead to the end. It's okay, that's going to definitely... Definitely going to cut down on the intelligibility a little bit. But uh, let's let's try it anyway. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As yeah, I've got negative third, negative fifth. Um, I'm just kind of letting it generate notes. Let me see here. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now, the effects of turning our blind eye to the crowd. We need to redefine the borders, tear our fences down. Okay, let me, uh, I actually kind of like the sound of that. Let me... See if I can blend that in to where it actually sounds somewhat cohesive. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now, the effects of turning a blind eye to the crowd. We need to redefine the borders, tear our fences down. I think it's the high notes that I'm not liking. Or we could build a wall, keep them apart, out of sight and out of mind. Twenty stories tall, nothing will harm those safe on the other side. We could assemble an army, ignorance is pissed, I'm much up lead to the end. It's happened before, sooner or later, the society is going to war. Okay, let's, uh, in context with the mix, let's blend that in. Right now I've got it at 9.9, .9, negative 9, 
basically negative 10 dBs. I'm going to take it all the way back down again and blend it back in. We can feel it in the air. Okay, so now that the lead vocals is back up to, oop, back up to speed, I'm going to turn everything back up again based off of that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and mute that. We can feel it in the air. Okay, let's check it. different but I like it oh, we can build a wall keep them apart out of sight and out of mind 20 stories on a big wall hard no safe on the other side we could assemble an army ignorance is pissed on my top of me to the end it's happened before sooner or later the society is going to war Okay, also sent um, sent it to the drive bus to give it some of the drive from the electric guitars. So now we got this. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now, the effect. All right, so we're going to blend that back in, um, and this is what we got. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As Paris burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now. The effects of turning up blind eye to the crowd. We need a read to find the borders, tear off. We can build a wall, keep them apart, out of sight and out of mind. When the stories on a thing will harm those safe on the other side. We could assemble an army, ignorance is pissed off, we're tough to the end. It's happened before, sooner or later, the society is going to war. The cracks strips apart along dividing lines. Where the seams no longer meet Making chasms of these city streets And I... Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad. Um, probably could have done that with fewer plugins, um, but it was fun to at least experiment and try to get that... something... something cooking up in there. Um, so we've got a good, I think, a, a good rough mix where we're at right now. 
and we might just go ahead and pick this up on a session number two uh, to allow um, just the general EQing of the rest of the instrumentation and to get everything uh, up to par. Uh, as of right now, though, yes, I'm hearing the plosives. <laughs> um, and some of that probably could be... No, it's, it's high past up to 100, so... That's it. You know what we're going to do. Where is it? Bring it on. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As pirates burn to talk of change. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do a minute ago um, when I was adding the, when I sent it to the Rock Guitars, um, the Sheps Drive here, but I don't think it was, it was quite drivey enough. I might try that though. I'm always up for trying these new plugins that happen. The one knob drive. Oh yeah. Yeah. We used to have a lot of one knobs in a cakewalk. It was pretty cool. Driver. Here we go. Driver, take me home. We can feel it in the air. We're falling apart. Fear is setting in. As virus burns, the talk of change is spreading on the wind. We're feeling it now. The effects of turning a blind eye to the crowd. See, that's the only problem that I have with some of the drives is they add in junk that I don't want so uh, there is a drive however that I know won't do that and I covered it here on the channel not too long ago berserk Okay, this one's just a little bit tricky to get lined up. We could build a wall, but once you do, keep them apart, out of sight and out of mind. Twenty stories tall, nothing will harm those safe on the other side. We could assemble an army, ignorance is pissed, our monopoly to the end. It's happened before, sooner or later, the society is going to war. The crap. We can feel it in the air We're falling apart Fear is setting in As pirates burns the go. talk of change is spreading on the wind We're feeling it now, the effects of Alright, that's more like it. Let's check it.
right. We've come to at least a good place where we can at least leave off and maybe come back and, and touch it up and do a little fixes. Not to mention, you don't want to have your ears wore out with a song. You want to give some time for it to rest. And so with that being said, uh, we will go ahead and end today's live session. If you have any questions um, here while the session is ending, go ahead and ask them now. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, now would be a great time to do so. Also, there is a giveaway that's going on. And um, if you have not, didn't know about that, the Sonable uh, Smart EQ3 is being given away. One of three copies will be given away to someone who is a subscriber, someone who is following me on Instagram or who has joined the Discord group. So go to the website, up at the very top of the website, that's homestudiosimplified.com. You'll see a giveaway tab up there. Just click on that and that'll show you exactly what you need to do to enter to win. The winner will be drawn on the 30th and the winner will be announced on the 1st. So check that out. Um, let's go ahead and... Um, what was it that we were going to do? Oh yeah, that's right. We were going to spin the wheel of awesomeness. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. In case you didn't know, we are spinning the wheel. And I'm Casey Case and bringing you the top 20 countdown of all of the wheel spins. Today, coming in at number 15, we've got Robert McClellan spinning for some trivia. <laughs> I think I get crazier every time I do a live stream. All right, so we've got some trivia today. Well, I would like to ask you in the chat if you know the answer to this. What was Freddie Mercury's real name? That's right. No Googling like I just did. No Googling. <laughs> Freddie Mercury's real name. I always thought it was Freddie Mercury, to be honest. Uh, but that was not the case. When did Robert learn how to do the moonwalk? Um, never. I tried, and it frustrated me. <laughs> Alright, guys, so... Ooh... Ian Van Zyl, hope I said that correctly. You're correct. That was actually his real name. It was Farouk Bulsara. Yeah, you guys are coming in the, with the heat now. Good deal. Well, thank you all, each and every one of you, for tuning into today's live stream. We do one of these every week unless something uh, happens, in which case last week it did. Um... Also, if you'd like to go and check out um, my son's channel, I would greatly appreciate that. I know he would appreciate it. It's Bubba Lewski. Uh, you can go and check that out there. Hey, Robert, it has come to my attention that setting up a reverb bus with either Reverb or the one in the Pro Channel doesn't work properly when you pan the send with the actual verb. Hmm. Interesting. I have I actually was using Reverb in this session. And did not uh, did not catch that. Okay, I'll have to look into that, and I'll get back with you and let you know. But until next time, guys, remember we we can dream alone, we can even create alone, but together, we can achieve so much more. God bless each and every one of you.